Welcome to the Maria Liberati Show, where food meets art, travel, and life. So what does food mean to you? Hey, I'm here with Chef Nicole Marchetti, and she's formerly a contestant on Chopped. She also has celiac disease, so she's going to help us with, you know, it's, it's um, Celiac Awareness Month, as we've been talking about gluten-free recipes all month, and she's going to share with us some great tips and recipes and she's also going to share with us some info on some charities she's doing some really nice work with some charities she's going to share that with us she's just got a whole bunch of stuff to share with us today nicole thank you so much for being with us today yes thank you so much for having me so nicole why don't you just tell us i know people always like to hear you know a, a little idea of your background and how you got into being a chef Oh, for sure. Yep. Um, so <clears throat> I like to say my story started very young. Uh, when I was 10 years old, I was making the toast at uh, my mother's work. She served, she was a waitress on the, on the weekends. She helped out. Uh, so I helped out on the weekends and I would make toast. Um, so that's kind of where I started in the kitchen was 10 years old, making $20 a day, which was pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> and then, you know, she, I, I, I moved up. I, as I went along, uh, I did food running, I did busing, I did serving tables, um, and then I finally got into the kitchen. Um, so that kind of is where it started. You know, my, my father was always very big on family meals, uh, making sure that we always sat down and we ate together. Um, Saturday nights were like his night. Uh, he would always make steak and his famous, his, or I call it his famous potatoes. I don't know how he does it. I still cannot replicate his potatoes to this day. Um, although I try very hard. It's very, <laughs> I can never make them taste like he does. Um, so really it just started at a young age and just loving food and just getting into it, and, you know, hands first. So, um, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. So tell us, before we get into celiac and all, tell us, because I know everybody always wants to hear, I know you told us you were on CHOP back in 2013. Is that right? Yes. So, so I appeared us. on food. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> I appeared on CHOP in 2013. Um, <clears throat> it actually filmed in 2012, December of 2012, and then it aired uh, June of 2013. Um so that's, it's a very long day. If anyone ever says anything about chat, it's a, it's a very long day. It starts at six o'clock in the morning and we were there until about nine, 10 o'clock at night. Oh my gosh. So, so yes. People think it's fun to be on chop. It's fun, but really hard work. <laughs> it's a very long, like I said, it's a very long day. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's great. And thanks for sharing that with everybody. So they know what it's really like. Yeah, so I know Nicole. You are um, you have celiac disease, so I know you have to be aware of eating gluten free, I guess, and all of that. So I'm sure you have some tips and or recipes too you can share with my listeners for celiac awareness month. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I'm a big fan of. Um, gluten-free oats. I love oats. I love oatmeal. I love baking with it. I love cooking with it. Um, <clears throat> so like my one big thing, because I'm also very into making not so healthy food healthier in a way. Um, <clears throat> so my big thing that I like to do is I always like to grind down oats and use that kind of as like the breadcrumb for say like a turkey meatball or a chicken meatball. Um, or uh, I'm at work, so you have to excuse my coworker. That's okay. Um, grinding that down. So actually last night I actually made, um, turkey meatballs for my family. And what I do is I take ground turkey and I grind up oats and I use that as the binder in it, uh, along with some egg, uh, -huh. uh and then your traditional like Italian seasonings and all that other fun stuff, um, uh -huh. Parmesan cheese. Um, that's one of my big things. I've coated chicken for, uh, my daughter. So I have two, two kids. I have a son and I have a daughter. Uh -huh. Um, <clears throat> so my daughter absolutely loves chicken nuggets. So I'm always trying to reinvent the wheel with, with it for her. Uh -huh. um, I, I'll do like an oat crust on, on a, a ground chicken nugget that I make in house. Um, so that's great if you have kids. Uh -huh. um, that's a nice, that's a great one to do. Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. um, another great gluten-free recipe that I love, um, it kind of goes um, 
in a completely opposite direction, but I'm a big fan of shakshuka. And shakshuka is a tomato-based dish um, with peppers and onions and cracked eggs. Uh, and then you kind of cook it into in a, uh, a heavy bottom pan, almost right. like a cast iron. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> that's probably one of my favorite. Uh, it's a super healthy breakfast. Uh -huh. um, and even my daughter will eat it. My daughter's three, so she's picky. Um, and wow. even she'll eat it. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's quite, it's very tasty. Um, we'll put some feta cheese on it. Um, and then I'll just, I'll, I'll just use like, um, a toast or a cracker. I'm still kind of perfecting gluten-free naan. Uh -huh. Um, so, um, it's, it's at a, it's at a point now where I'm, I'm still kind of working on it. I'm not a hundred percent the biggest baker in the world, uh -huh. <laughs> but <clears throat> we're working on it. Uh -huh. I can, I can bake a lot of regular stuff with regular flour, but you right. know, the gluten side of it tends to be a little bit tricky some days it is it is i know i've even tried baking with you know the gluten free stuff and you're absolutely right i think it's a trial and error process right because it doesn't yes. behave like the normal you know flour <laughs> baking powder and all that we're so used to cooking with so it's yeah. kind of like a trial and error thing so i'm you know i hear you definitely Mm -hmm. So any kind of like sweet things you can tell people like that could be gluten-free? So the easiest thing that I find that um, is made gluten-free that's sweet, is it like a banana bread or a zucchini bread? Uh -huh. Something that already has a lot of natural moisture in it. Exactly. Okay. So uh, the one that I use, um, let me just bring up my recipe here for my gluten-free banana bread. Who doesn't like banana bread? I think everybody knows that. I, mean, it's so I love banana bread. <laughs> um, well, before we get into the actual recipe for banana bread, yes. um, the different types of gluten-free flours, um, there's a lot of good ones out there and there's a lot of bad ones out there. Uh -huh. um, one that I'm not 100% dead set I love to use is the Bob's Red Mill gluten-free flour. Oh, yeah. Kind of uh -huh. leaves a little bit of an aftertaste. Yeah. Um, the two that I that I really like is King Arthur flour makes a gluten-free flour. That's it's like an all-purpose flour that one's yes. really good. And then um, Cup for Cup, uh -huh. uh, which is actually a side business or a Bouchon Bakery, which is Thomas Keller's restaurant, the French Laundry. Okay. Um, yes. Bouchon Bakery puts out. Uh, cup for cup, which is also another really, really great uh, uh, one to one ratio for flour to gluten free flour. Oh, so yeah. if I ever bake anything, it's with either of those two flours. Yeah. And I think, don't you find out, don't you find too that, the, right, the type of flour you use, because I've had some good, uh, I've had some good results with King, the King Arthur gluten free flour. Yeah, that's so probably I, my favorite. I just did a coffee cake. It was, it was real. Everybody just loved it. And it was gluten free with the King Arthur gluten-free yep. flour because I had a guest that was coming over that had to eat gluten-free so I'm like what can I make that everybody will like but uh, the cup the cup with that cup for cup that sounds great also yeah so, yeah um, great but I think flour is, is also but yes I'm sorry go ahead yes no you're good you're good um <clears throat> So out of, out of everything, those are the two that I always recommend, especially if you're not used to mixing your own flowers, mm -hmm. um, because you can get heavily into buying a whole bunch of different types of flowers and then mixing your own, um, depending on what you need. But if you just want a regular all-purpose flower, those are the two that I always highly recommend. Yeah. Um, they're just super easy to work with. Uh -huh. um, but I a lot of the times, those two flowers are the ones where I can take a normal recipe or a recipe that just has regular wheat flour in it right. and then just toot out either one of those flours and it comes out fine okay. so it, there's no like um oh well it didn't rise or it didn't do this it didn't do that you know it they work very well yeah. um Anyway, so this is my gluten-free banana bread recipe. So I take two cups of all-purpose uh, gluten-free flour, like I said, either the King Arthur or the Measure for Measure, yeah. uh, one teaspoon of baking soda, a quarter teaspoon of salt, uh, a half a cup of unsalted butter, uh, three quarters of a cup uh, packed, packed light brown sugar, uh -huh. um, two large eggs, a third of a cup of yogurt, uh, two cups of mashed bananas and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll cream together the butter and the sugar. Right. 
um, and then I'll put all my dry ingredients. So my flour, my, my leavening agents, you know, the baking soda, the salt. Yeah. Um, if you want to throw some cinnamon in it, you can throw some cinnamon in it. Uh -huh. um, and then after I get done creaming my butter and my sugar together, my, my light brown sugar, yeah. uh, I'll add in my eggs and then I'll add in my mashed banana and then I'll add in my dry ingredients okay. and I'll kind of mix until it's all nice and combined. Uh -huh. um, I will put it in a loaf pan. I think the one that I have is a nine inch loaf pan. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> I spray it down first, put it into the loaf pan and then bake at 325 for about an hour. Uh -huh. And it comes out great. Yeah, that sounds really yummy. And again, yeah. all these ideas, like, you know, a while ago, not too long ago, when if you were gluten free, there really wasn't too many choices, right? They were terrible. Yeah, Even there was nothing. <laughs> I, oh my goodness. I remember pasta was like, people would be making me taste this gluten free pasta. And it was like, oh my gosh, are you kidding? But now I've eaten gluten free pasta that you almost don't even know. You know, it's the dry pasta, so it's not, I actually, there is fresh gluten-free pasta too, but yes. it's like, you, right? You almost don't know, you, you don't miss it really, because it's just, it's really good stuff. So mm -hmm. I guess that people need a time to experiment and like we were saying, trial and error. So yeah, so you don't really- For sure, there's definitely, and there's definitely differences in the pastas too. Uh-huh. Um, so for instance, uh, like a, a a more rice-based pasta uh -huh. um, is going to fall apart on you a lot quicker. But if you have a more of a corn-based pasta, it's going to hold its shape. So like Berea, uh, Ranzoni makes a, a, a corn-based pasta. Uh -huh. And there's, I know there's another couple out there. There are. I've seen a few others out there. I yeah, like if you go to like an Italian specialty store, they have like, uh, it's right on the tip of my tongue and I can't remember the name of the pasta. Uh-huh. But the corn-based ones are going to hold up a, a lot better. Exactly. Yes, they, they do. You, I, I noticed that you're absolutely right. When I first started experimenting with gluten-free pasta, I would have some that would just come out like mushy. Like it was like polenta, you know? Yes. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. So, but you're absolutely right. The corn ones do hold up a whole lot better. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, people, you know, thank goodness if, if people, they don't have to suffer, they can you know, still enjoy eating well with a lot of these tips. So any other last minute tips for, for people with, uh, who have to be gluten-free aware? Oh, wow. Yes. A lot. Um, one, don't lick the envelope. Um, did you know that there's gluten in the, in the glue strip of envelopes? No. Oh yeah. my gosh. Wow. <laughs> wow. So yeah. you know, that's a tip. So, you know, you could be not feeling well and you could have done something right like that. And you didn't even realize what you did. Yeah. I make my husband do it. Cause I just, I don't. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my God. Um, wow. What else? Uh, if you're ever using anything that's like yeast risen, uh, -huh. uh you always have to add a little bit more yeast. Like I'm still trying to perfect a soft pretzel recipe because I can't get my yeast right. Oh, um, okay. But any any anything that's that's risen like that, I always add in a little bit more because yeah. gluten-free flour is a lot heavier than than yeah. regular flour. Yeah. Um, so it's not going to rise all the way that you want it to. Right. So you sure. put in a little bit of extra yeast, and it it should turn out a little bit better. And I'm also trying to work on a another recipe where I can like actually braid the bread uh -huh. or like work with it. Oh yeah. That's another work in progress. Yes. So. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, that sounds interesting. Yeah. It's all and it's worth it too, because then you'll come out with a, you know, some other good, uh, really delicious, other delicious recipes. Nicole, lastly, I know you told me that you're involved with some charities and some charity work. Tell us, it sounded so nice these dinners you're doing. I wanted to people to let people know about them. Yeah, for sure. So um, in the area that I live, we have Hospice of Lancaster, uh -huh. uh, who obviously deals with hospice patients and also hospice children, um, which they do a lot of uh, community work for. And then I also do um, do charity work for Hope in the Air. Uh -huh. um, and they do their charity events and charity galas the last couple of years. They benefited the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia with their service dog training program. Uh -huh. Um, you know, just funding that and getting service dogs in there for those kids because, you know, yeah. that's a way of healing too. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so what they do is they auction off a five-course dinner um, paired with wine that I create for them. And I'll actually go into their houses. Last year, I didn't do any because of, you know, COVID. Yeah. Um, 
but this year we're finally starting to be okay. And, and, you know, it get, I'm starting to feel okay with it too, uh, going into people's houses and, yes. and, uh, getting, you know, doing the five courses. So it's, it starts out, you know, with your amuse, which is yes. just kind of something to get your, your palate going. Yes. Um, and then we go into, um, a salad course, an appetizer course, an entree, and a dessert course. And each one of those courses is paired with um, a different wine uh -huh. that I get to go out and, and get for them. And I get to create this dinner for them. And I, you know, it's, it's great. It's so you much fun. You go to their house too, isn't that what you said? You go and you do the dinner, like you're there yep. and you're saying it's, oh, that's great. Yeah, I do everything. I bring everything to their house and we do it there. Yep. Wow. That's great. That's mm -hmm. great. And it's so nice that it helps. Um, it helps an organization too that you know they really need it. You really need it, especially now after this year and whatever a half, I guess, or something. That yes. we had. So that's really nice, Nicole. Thank you so much. I'm sure I'll be asking you to come back, and um, we'll, we'll have you. Well, thank come. you very much. I would love to. <laughs> yes, definitely. And thank you so much for for being here and sharing those tips and everybody. Um, do you have a website or anything to tell people to look for or? I have an Instagram. <laughs> well, that's fine. So, yeah. Tell. Do you want to tell everybody how to find you on Instagram? Yeah, sure. It's um, just at Nikki. So my my maiden name is Mumolo. Uh, Nikki Mumolo. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Nicole. So everybody, you can find her on Instagram. All right. We'll be talking to you. Thanks, Nicole. Take care. Thank you.